going to the house of the Lord. For truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We shall enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. And we shall come before his presence with a song. Why don't you join in singing with us one of the familiar hymns of the church, hymn number 164. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my soul rose away. Amen. Alas, this day my Savior bleed at the cross. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him, y'all. Come on.
go into each home, each household, right now, Lord. Bless and keep everyone. And put your presence where all can see. In the precious name of Jesus, we'll never get tired of your love. So pray in the name of Jesus. Jersey City, New Jersey, or give the five St. Michael Methodist Church, or Cash App. Please remember, join us for Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m., also live on Facebook. Thank you. Amen. Yes, they do. 
according to our master's perfect and his holy will. So no matter what you're going through, remember that Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man laid from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John go together into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. 
Now, as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our power and godliness we had healed this man, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus. Whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses, all together, and his name, faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. You may be seated.
up another morning. God, I just want to thank you for using me in a mighty way. God, I just want to thank you for looking beyond all my thoughts and seeing to my knees. Lord, I just want to thank you for all that you've done for me. Amen. Amen. Beloved, it is time for our scripture reading. Please grab your Bibles and turn with us to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, where we shall read verses 1 through 6. That's the 55th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 6. Amen? Amen. No, that's wrong. It's Isaiah 55, 6 through 11. Amen? Amen? Amen. 6 through 11. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For us the heavens are higher, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Please turn with me to Acts, amen, Acts chapter 1, verses 20 through 26. Amen. That's the book of Acts, the first chapter, where we shall read from verse 20 through verse 26. For it is written in the book of Psalms. Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore of these men, which have companied with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. The word of God for the people of God, glory be to God. Amen. 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 Beloved, it's prayer time. Deacon Roslyn Robinson shall come forth and lead us to the throne of grace. Let every heart pray.
We come to you in the mighty and blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. The name that is above all names. We come with humble hearts and we come thanking you for your grace and mercy. You've allowed us to be here another day on this earth, oh God. You've given us grace and mercy regardless of what we have done yesterday and in the past. You have just given us a brand new beginning today and we just want to say thank you on this beautiful morning that you allow us that we can come into this house and take a part and come to your throne to just worship you and praise you because you are so worthy because you are the God who created all things. Yeah. Oh mighty God, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you for your mighty word. We thank you that you are God and there is none like you. No one can compare to you. So Lord, we lift and we raise you up this day, God. We give you the glory, we give you the honor. We thank you that your thoughts are higher than ours and your yes. ways are not our ways. Yes. God, we come to you to say, forgive us, oh Lord, for our thoughts and our words and our deeds and anything that goes against your holy divine word because your holy divine word is spirit. It is life. It gives life. Yeah. God, you are king. You reign over all. Nothing goes on in this earth without you knowing. You allow things to happen. We may not understand the reason behind it, but you are great. And you allow these things to happen because there's a greater purpose. You are the one who raises up kings, and you are the one who removes kings. It's all in your glory. It's all in your work. It's all in your plan. So God, come in today and give us a revelation of your word. Heal our hearts while we seek your face. Because we need you right now. We desperately need you like the deer that pants for the water. Yes. But God, if we stay rooted and grounded in your holy word, yes. we shall not be moved. Amen. We can do all things through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who strengthens us. Because, Lord, you are everything. You are everything that we need. You are our all. There is none like you. So, Lord, you come on in. Yeah. Guide us and lead us. Yes. Bring us a message through the messenger today. Yes, Lord. That it will be meat for us that we can use and mm -hmm. apply in our lives for your use. These things we bless your name.
Amen. 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 Gracious God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for the songs of the gospel that have been sung. We thank you, God, for the word of scripture that has been read. And we thank you, Lord, for the powerful prayers that have written into your holy ears. Now, my God, is preaching time. My Lord, your people have come together and gathered in your name that they might hear a word from you. Speak, Lord, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Coming from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, between verses 20 and 26, actually beginning from the chapter, that whole chapter, we have prepared a sermon to preach, and we call it, God is God all by himself. God is God, God, is God. Yes, all, by all by himself. The story goes that the apostle Peter stood up one day in the midst of the disciples and he said to them, men and brethren, the scripture must be fulfilled. Yes. King David, through the power of the Holy Ghost, concerning Judas prophesied that the one who betrayed Christ Jesus, the one who betrayed Christ Jesus shall be desolate. He says, this Judas Iscariot was one of us. He was a part of this ministry and he turned on Jesus for 30 pieces of silver with which he purchased the fig. Peter said, and then he fell head first and busted it all wide open. He said even his bowels gushed out. Yes. And everybody knows about it and we now call that field the field of blood. Mm -hmm. Peter said it is written in Psalm 109 let his habitation be desolate. Let no man dwell therein and let another take his bishopry. That is why Peter says we must choose a man who has been with us the whole time to be ordained as a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. So out of all the men who had been with them, they selected two, Joseph and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, you know the hearts of all men. Show us which of these two you have chosen that he may take part in this ministry and that he may take part in this apostleship which was left vacant by the transgression of Judas. He said, choose, Lord, from these two that he might take Judas's place. Then they cast their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias and Matthias took Judas's place. Beloved, nowhere in Scripture can we find any instruction from Jesus for them to select another man to take Judas' place. The prophecy of David says, let another take his place. It does not say, y'all choose somebody to take his place. As if God can't choose who he wants to choose. As God can't call who he wants to call. The Apostle Peter, you see, has always been a bit impulsive and a bit impetuous. He, he, he doesn't seem to think before he speaks. He rarely ever thinks before he acts. He shoots from the hip and he often acts upon his own will. And that's exactly what happened here. He's running on his own will instead of seeking the will of God. God is God all by himself, and God knows what he's doing. God doesn't need us to run out ahead of him. God doesn't need us to decide whom he should call. God does not need us to push our own will and to push our own agenda. Because whatever we do, we fail. Every time we seek our own will, we end up getting ourselves in a deeper mess. We've got to learn that before we ever make a move, we need to first seek the will of God. We need to first seek the pleasure of God. And we need to seek first 
the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, knowing then that all these things shall be added. Y'all got to excuse me this morning. It's hot. And we have yet to turn on the AC, but we're going to have it on next week. I know it's first Sunday. It's a day for formality. So Y'all got to bear with it, brother, because the brother's hot up in here. Amen? Amen. Amen. The problem is that we are not seeking the will of God as a people as we ought to. So too many of us run out ahead of God, trying to play God and control everything around us. You know, they call that self-will run right when people feel that they've always got to be in charge, that they've always got to be in control of everything and everybody around them. Believing that you can control the world around you is a fallacy. It's a lie. It's a myth. Most of us can't even control our own tempers. Some of us can't even control our tongues. And Almost none of us can control the thoughts that enter our minds and the feelings that come into our hearts. But when we seek to turn our will over to the will of God, God will fill our minds with his word. God will fill our hearts with his love and he will allow his word to come spilling from our lips like perfected praise. Then we'll know what we need to do and we'll know how we need to go about it. But Peter did not seek God's will. Just look at what he did. He decided that the one who should take Judas's place had to be one who was with them the whole time. Verse 23 says they selected two out of all the people that had been around, Peter decided to boil it down to just two, and he picked the wrong one. Many of us have done exactly the same thing. Done exactly the same thing. We went out on our own will and picked the wrong wife. We went out on our own will and picked the wrong men. On our own will, and we picked the wrong church. They selected just two and then they prayed for God to pick one. God is God all by himself, and God knows what God is doing. You can't put God in a box and then try to make him conform to your will. Right. You can't put God on your agenda and then expect him to do what you want God to do. You must seek the will of God with an open mind. You must seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The word says, let the wicked forsake his own way and let the unrighteous man forsake his own thoughts and return to the Lord. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. We've got to learn to surrender our will and surrender our way to God by praying and humbly bowing down at his feet that God would order our steps in his word so that no iniquity will have dominion over us. That God will order our steps in his word because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We need to pray that God will order our steps in his word because his word ought to be a lamp unto our feet and a light upon our path. We need to pray that God will order our steps in his word that we might stay in the word of God. We must pray with an open mind to stay focused because God will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is stayed on him. We must pray with an open heart because God shall fill our hearts with the Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost power from on high that shall teach us all things and show us the way that we ought to go. Peter never asked God which way he ought to go. I hear y'all at home on Facebook. Y'all just as quiet as you can be. Don't get upset because I'm talking about Peter. Ain't none of us perfect. All have fallen short of the glory of God. But it doesn't matter what you do when still you are giving your life to God. Even your mess ups, God is going to make it work out for good. So it's all right if you talk about Peter this morning. The brother was not perfect. He never asked God which way to go. He took it upon himself to select two. 
He took it upon himself then to ask God to pick one from just those two. And then in verse 26, they cast their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias and he was numbered with the 11. I need you to know what casting lots was like. Have you ever seen in the old movies? Usually it's an old wise man, a, a sage they call him. Sometimes they call him a witch doctor, sometimes they call him the voodoo man. And he would take those bones, you've seen it before. He would take the bones, he would shake them, and then he would throw the bones, and he would read them through the power of the spirit to decide what they wanted to do. Now I want you to know it ain't much different than shooting dice. It ain't much different than shooting craps. It's a game of chance, a game of chance that was used many times in the Bible. When Jonah brought the wrath of God upon that ship, the men on the ship cast lots to see which one had done it. The lot fell upon Jonah and they took Jonah and they threw him overboard. In Leviticus, they cast lots to see which one would be the sacrificial lamb and which one would be the scapegoat. And even in the gospel, at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, they cast lots to see who would get Jesus' clothes. Often these people casting lots did not know the word of God and cared nothing about the will of God. And this is the method that Peter chooses to determine Judas's replacement. Don't trust your future to a game of chance. Don't trust your ministry to a game of chance. Put your trust in the will of God. Put your faith in the hands of God and learn to pray in God's way and in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. In all your prayers acknowledge him and he shall answer your prayers. In all your life acknowledge him and he shall acknowledge you. God is God all by himself and God knows what he's doing. Acknowledge him when you pray. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Acknowledge him when you pray. Lord, you are my father and hallowed be your name. When you pray, Lord, you are sovereign. When you pray, Lord, you are mighty. When you pray, Lord, you are awesome. Lord, I bow down that bended knee. When you pray, humble yourself in the presence of God because he is God and he is God all by himself. He knows what he's doing and sometimes he, he always knows what he's doing but sometimes we don't always know and we have not because we ask not ask the Lord to make his will and his plan visual to you ask him to make it plain ask Jesus to share his way with you we have a friend in Jesus one we can call upon. We have a friend in Jesus, one whom we can rely upon. He said, from henceforth, I'll no longer call you servants because the servant does not know his master's will. But from now on, I'll call you friends because everything that I get from my father, I shall share it with you. We have a friend in Jesus. So Peter should have just asked his friend, Jesus Christ, who should take Judas's place? He should have humbly made that prayer with an open mind and with an open heart. And he should have waited to hear from the Lord before he ever made a move. If he would have, he would have discovered that God already had a ram in the bush. If he would have just waited on the Lord, he would have learned that God had already been calling, planning to call Paul to be ordained as an apostle. Oh, you know Paul? Yes. The one who wrote more books in the New Testament than anybody else. You know Paul? The one who brought more disciples to Christ than anybody else. The one who said, I am not worthy to be called an apostle because I did not walk with Jesus from the beginning. He said, but nevertheless, I labored more than them all. Nevertheless, I am what I am. Nevertheless, I am an apostle called not by the will of God of man, but called by the will of God. Amen. 
Amen. God told me. He said the gospel that I had, nobody told it to me. Jesus taught me. Jesus Amen. turned my life around. Jesus knocked me off my horse. Jesus put me back on my feet. Jesus gave me a word to teach. It was the Lord who turned my life around and called me to spread his holy word. What the Lord has done for me, I just can't keep it to myself, so I am what I am. He sought God's will. He gave him the power to carry it out. We must seek God's will. We cannot continue to run ahead of God, trying to control everything. We've got to learn that God is God all by himself. And if we would just seek his perfect will, he will make it plain so we all can understand. He will bless us with the power to carry it out, and he will bless us with the power to carry out his perfect will. And God is so good, beloved. He is so gracious that when, even when we run out on our own will and mess things up, God has a way of teaching us a lesson and giving us a blessing. God has a way of cleaning up our mess and cleaning and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. And y'all got to know that the disciples ain't the only one who picked the wrong man. And that was, you know what, that wasn't even their first mistake. Their first mistake was deciding that the one who was picked had to be a man. That was their first mistake, that the choice had to be a man. And they picked the wrong man. But America picked the wrong man too. America picked the wrong man to be president. All because too many Americans thought that any man would be better than a woman. So America made this mess by running on her own will. And God is cleaning up our mess right now. But we have never witnessed a movement like we are seeing right now. People are calling out for decency. People are uniting for righteousness. People are fighting for justice. And justice will roll down like waters. And righteousness like a mighty stream. For all things work together. For those who love God. For those who are called according to his will. For those who are called according to his purpose. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how you messed up. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how you've been. All that matters is that you seek the will of God. And you stretch out your hands to him. And you said, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, where will I go? You got to learn to trust in Jesus. You got to learn to trust in God. You got to learn to walk in his way. You got to learn to seek his will. You got to learn that God is God all by himself. He don't need you to fix up what he came to fix up. The world is the Lord and everything you belong to God so give your will to God give your way to God and God will bless you to be exactly what God wants you to do oh give God a hand clap of praise yeah. pray with an open heart if you're looking for a blessing you can ask God to bless you any way he wants to bless you you can tell him what you need. You can tell him the desires of your heart. His word says he will bless us with the desires of our heart if we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. But beloved, you heard it said before, sometimes you got to be careful of what you pray for because you just might get it. Amen. And then you got to pray that God will take it away. So the best thing to do, the blessed thing to do, it's just to pray to God, use me any way you want to use me. Bless me any way you want to bless me. Take me anywhere you want to take me and shape me and mold me any way you want me to be. And God, I will be yours and I will do exactly what it is you tell me to do. Oh, we got to allow ourselves to be used by God in a holy and righteous way because his ways 
are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. It does not either, it never occurs to the mind of man, neither has it entered into the heart of man. I have not seen and ear has not heard those things that the Lord has prepared for his people. Years ago, when I was struggling in life, struggling, going through the trials and tribulations that befall so many of our black brothers in the inner city. I prayed to God and I said, Lord, if you save me from this mess, I will do whatever you tell me to do. I will go wherever you tell me to go. I said, Lord, my life is ruined. So I give it to you because I didn't destroy it. I give it to you. God, if you fix it up and give me a new life, I'll give that one to you too. And it will be yours to use the way you want. And beloved, when I made that prayer, all I wanted was to stop hurting. When I made that prayer, all I wanted was to get out of hell. When I made that prayer, I never knew that the Lord would fill my heart. I never knew that my life would be ten times better than it was. I never knew that God would lift me up so high. I never knew that the Lord would even glorify me and honor me by allowing me to speak a holy word for him. It does not matter what you do. It does not matter where you've been. Once you turn your will over to the glory of God, God will bless you in ways you have never even seen, thought, or imagined. I can tell you because I'm a witness to the goodness of God. I can tell you because the Lord has blessed me so. I can tell you because God came here to tell me that he wants to use you. He wants to take you. He wants to heal you. He wants to give you a power of glory. God wants to bless you in ways you have never even dreamed. Ways you have never even considered. God is just waiting for you to say, Lord, here I am. Will there be one this morning? Oh, please stand on your feet. Are you here this morning to give your life to God? God wants to use you in a mighty way. He wants to take you out of the hell in which you find yourself now. He wants to take away, take away the depression that weighs you down. He wants to live. He said, oh, take my yoke apart. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God wants to remove the heavy burdens from your life. He wants to bless you in your home. He wants to bless you in your job. He wants to bless you in your finances if you would just call out. Lord, save me. Bless me and use me the way you want to use pray right now. We're going to thank God for his word. We're going to pray right now that everybody desiring to be saved can be saved right now. When we get to the sinner's prayer, I'm going to ask everyone who wants to be saved and everyone who is already saved to repeat that prayer with me. Amen? Amen. Gracious God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for a holy word. A word, my God, that teaches us that you are sovereign, that you are in control. Even when we try to snatch control back and do what we want to do, you have a way, God, of making it all work out for good. Lord, forgive us for trying to run out ahead of you. Lord, forgive us for our own selfishness. Forgive us for thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And bless us, God, that we might be humble servants, that we might be good friends of Christ, that we might see your perfect will and pray, my God, for understanding and the power to carry it out. Lord, bless us to always pray in a position of humility. Bless us, God, to always pray with open minds, with open hearts, that our prayers shall surely be. God, we give you thanks, and we ask you to bless us any way you want to bless us. Now, beloved, the sinner's prayer, repeat with me, please. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe he is the Son of God. I confess with my mouth. 
I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Wash me in the precious blood. Wash me in the precious blood. Fill my heart with the Holy Ghost. Fill my heart with the Holy Ghost. I renounce Satan. And all his wicked ways. And all of his wicked ways. Lord, come into my heart. Lord, come into my heart. Make my heart your home. Make my heart your home. From this day forward. From this day forward. And forevermore. And forevermore. I am saved. 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 Give God a hand, God the way. Glory be to God. We thank Him for salvation. We thank Him for love. Thank God for Jesus Christ. For God is God all by himself. And God knows what God is doing. Amen. 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 Praise God. From whom all blessings Lord.